This is Georgia's 92 Vote. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Riches, all about the South. And by Pizza Hut Delivery, home of the half-price pizza. Now, with Georgia's 92 Vote, Don Farmer, Monica Kaufman, and political reporter Bill Nygut. Hello. We are told by election officials in Fulton and DeKalb County that the reason we don't have any local numbers as yet, we've just been giving you presidential, is because some people are still standing in line. They don't expect to start counting the votes from those areas until around 9 o'clock. So welcome back with our live coverage of the 92 vote. And even though the polls have been closed, now since 7, as we said, thousands of Georgians still are waiting their turn to vote. ABC News already has projected Bill Clinton the winner here in Georgia, but that's a projection. That's not a vote count. Here's how the presidential race stacks up right now in our state. Let's take a look at the latest returns. Well, we'll get that for you momentarily as we get some updated uh, numbers coming in at the moment. Let's go now to the U.S. Senate race here with 11% of the precincts reporting. Whites follow the incumbent Democrat is ahead with 50% of the vote. Paul Coverdale, the Republican challenger with 47%. Jim Hudson, the Libertarian Party candidate, has 3% of the vote. John Alston has been covering the Fowler campaign. Let's go live to John now at Fowler headquarters. Well, Don, this is the night that uh, GOP members and Paul Coverdale have waited for the chance to possibly put a Republican in the U.S. Senate representing Georgia. And with me here is Paul Coverdale. Let me ask you first off, do you know any numbers that we don't know about how well you're doing? No, it's too early, John. What you're seeing here is what everybody's seeing, although... I've said for a year that this race is going to be a, uh, settled by less than two points. We've been fighting the perception that it wouldn't be, but it will be. We'll be here a long time tonight. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Coverdell. A long time tonight because a lot of the support for this particular candidate is going to come from around suburban Atlanta, and we've heard the horror stories about voting there. Reporting live from GOP headquarters, I'm John Alston, Channel 2 Action News. Well, the incumbent U.S. Senator Weish Fowler is also watching the returns tonight. He spoke to us a few moments ago about how the figures look so far. I have enough respect for the people of Georgia to wait to they all get tallied and get up around 40 or 50 percent until we uh, see how it goes. And, just briefly. and we'll have a live report from the Fowler headquarters later on in our coverage tonight. One of the uh, issues on the ballot that many account for, at least some of the big voter turnout today, was, of course, the lottery here in Georgia. Governor Miller won re-election two years ago, at least in part because of his advocacy of the lottery. Uh, he is for it, as you know. But a lot of Georgians, including some church people, have mounted a strong effort, a strong campaign to oppose it. And they've been rallying that anti-lottery campaign. Here are the numbers at this point on the lottery vote as we have them. Only 3% of the precincts reporting, or at least have been counted on this so far. As you can see, the no votes are ahead by 55% to 45%, but we have a long way to go, and we are not projecting an outcome just yet. And our coverage of Georgia's 92 vote continues in just a minute with the mayor of Atlanta and Bill Nygut. You may know it that you didn't really vote for president today. None of us did, actually. We voted for electors. It's part of our system in this republic. Some say it's great. Some say it ought to be abolished. But that's the way it is. One of the men you may have voted for today was Atlanta's mayor, Maynard Jackson. And as you know, the mayor is with us now with Bill Nygut to talk about the election today. And if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Mayor, you look terrific. You've, uh, you've really uh, been on your diet and working hard, it looks like. I'm being faithful, doing everything Valerie tells me to do. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> let, let me start by asking, what, what, look, we're watching the results first of this presidential race and one state after another falling into Clinton's uh, corner there. What do you think? I mean, what kind of, what, how, what do you characterize the way this evening seems to be shaping up? I think that it's going to be a landslide for Clinton. Uh, remember the movie that came out, the guy uh, on television was semi-crazy, I'm mad as hell, I'm not going to take it anymore. And this, America has turned out, not just turned out to vote, but turned out in the biggest numbers ever, apparently. And I think America is saying we're mad as hell, we're not going to take it anymore. There's no longer the Russian bear to blame. And now we have to look at the boogie bear of the economy in America. And there's so many groups hurting. It's like William Jennings Bryan once uh, talked about um, destiny. Uh, it's not subject to... Um, um, uh, it's more subject to, to choice mm -hmm. than it is to chance. And I think that's happening here. I think the American people do not like being a debtor nation when we were a creditor nation. So you think it's a landslide for Clinton? I think it's a landslide in the economy. The pocketbook issue is a central issue. Let me get you a quick uh, question about Coverdale Fowler. It looks like this race could be very, very close. If it is, why? It could. Well, uh, I don't think it's going to be that close. I think it's going to be a win for Fowler. Uh, the major black boxes are still voting. 
And uh, I think it's go they're going to go 90% for a white follower. So opinion. you expect him to pull it out. All right, I you're going to be so. over at the Clinton headquarters, I guess, in a little I'm while. And we thank you for uh, being with us tonight, Happy to do Mayor. it. Don and Monica. All right, gentlemen, thank you. That's how the 92 vote looks in Georgia right now. We'll be back at 852 when we begin our extended live coverage. Thanks for counting on Channel 2 Action News for tonight's election return. Stick with us. We'll have more later. This is Georgia's 92 votes. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Pizza Hut Delivery, home of the half-price pizza, and by Riches, all about the South. Now with Georgia's 92 votes, Monica Kaufman, Don Farmer, and political reporter Bill Nygut. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of the 92 Vote. We'll have live, complete team coverage of all the major races and the candidates in with reports from Houston, Little Rock, and of course all across North Georgia. We want to get right to the latest election results for you now. And there are a lot of votes to count tonight here in Georgia. The Secretary of State's office reports that at least 70% of the registered voters here in Georgia went to the polls today. It may be higher and at any rate it is a record turnout in this century. We're going to hear more about that and about this general election in general through the night from our political reporter, Bill Nygut. Well, Don, also with us tonight to share their views on how the people voted and why are the Georgia Secretary of State, Max Cleland, who is one of the top Democratic vote-getters in the state every time he runs, and Johnny Isaacson, a prominent uh, businessman in Cobb County who ran for governor against Zell Miller in 1990. He, too, one of the most popular Republican vote-getters. Joining us in a short time will be Ken Kendrick, who has been the state chairman of the uh, Perot campaign in Georgia. So uh, we have them all here for you, uh, Monica. Thank you very much, Bill. So now let's go right to the results. Looking at the race for the president, you see Bill Clinton is ahead with 46% of the vote. Mr. Bush looking for a second term behind right now with 39%. Ross Perot with 15%. Again, we do not have the figures for Moreau. When we go to the U.S. Senate race, we see the incumbent, Weish Fowler, ahead with 53% of the vote. Paul Coverdale, former head, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of the Peace Corps has 44% of the vote and then the Libertarian candidate with 3% of the vote. And then moving over to the 6th District, the newly drawn 6th District, where we will have in a moment the figures will be the lone GOP -er in our delegation, Newt Gingrich. We'll have those figures for you in just a moment. They aren't in yet because many of the polling places in those districts are still letting people vote. So as soon as we get the information, we'll share it with you. Well, as you know, the entire United States House of Representatives elects itself every two years. So we have some key congressional races for you from Georgia tonight. First of all, in the third congressional district, south of Atlanta, parts of Henry, Clayton, Fayette counties, and parts of Columbus, actually. United States Representative, the Democratic incumbent Richard Ray, has 50% of the vote. It's very close there now, but again, only 16% of the precincts reporting. State Senator Mac Collins from Butts County has... 45 percent, have 50 percent of the vote also, very close. To the 4th Congressional District, um, parts of uh, DeKalb County, parts of Gwinnett and east of there with 2 percent of the precincts reporting. Kathy Steinberg, one of three women hoping to represent Georgia in the U.S. House this time. The Democrat has 55 percent of the vote. John Linda, the Republican, has 45 percent with 2 percent reporting. Very small numbers reporting so far. And as Monica told you, the 6th District figures aren't in yet. Let's move on to the 7th U.S. Congressional District from Georgia with 16% of the precincts reporting. Um, you can see that Buddy Darden, the incumbent Democrat, has 58% of the vote. Al Beverly, who ran against uh, Darden and lost two years ago, is behind so far this evening with 42% of the vote. Well, the race has been controversial in Congressional District Number 9 in North Georgia because of one candidate's anti-abortion ads. He wanted to run them, uh, but he went to court and was told, you're not gonna run them during prime time. As you see right now, Becker is behind with 37% of the vote, and, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> Deal is ahead with 63% of the vote. Moving to the next area, District 11, this is Cynthia McKinney, who has 67% of the vote, and you see Lovett with 33% of the vote. Cynthia McKinney is a former state legislator, and Woodrow Lovett is a farmer from Burke County. And looking at the lottery amendment as you know this is something the governor strongly supported right now with six percent of the precincts reported 52 percent of the voters are saying no georgia as you know is a key state in this election for president president bush felt that he really needed georgia to lead his way through the south let's take a look at the return so far in our state with not quite a fourth of the precincts reporting around georgia bill clinton has a lead of uh, 46 percent of the vote so far 
The president is in second place with 39%. Ross Perot, the independent, this was the big question mark tonight, how well would he do here and around the country? Ross Perot so far has 15% of the vote here in Georgia. Tonight, our Chris Curl is with Bush supporters at their headquarters for the state with a live update. Chris. Yeah, some of the biggest uh, Bush supporters. A little history here. Uh, Republican presidents have won four out of the last five times here in Georgia. The exception, of course, was uh, Jimmy Carter, a native son. Uh, this year, George Bush has been here seven times. Dan Quayle countless times, at Probably least uh, five or six times. And Ronald Reagan, one of the big Republican guns, was pulled in last weekend. And uh, Mr. Bush himself was speaking with our Bill Nygut last night in an 11th hour phone call. You can't say that the Bush campaign ignored Georgia or didn't do as much as it could do. So why is it so close? What went wrong, if anything went wrong? Fred Cooper, who is the main man for Bush quail here in Georgia. Chris, I'm not sure exactly whether anything has gone wrong or not. That The exit polls, I don't think, are, are accurate. I think this thing is going to close and be a very tight race but we've known from the very outset it would be tight this year. The president is the incumbent. We've had a, an economy that's perceived as being down, and the president is the one who catches that. So we knew we weren't going to do as well as we did four years ago. Plus, we've had to fight all the Democrats in prior presidential elections. The Democratic leadership has taken a vow. You've had everyone from Sam Dunn to Governor Miller actively campaigning for someone who is perceived as being a neighbor from the of sister southern states. There were a lot of reasons that we knew this was going to be a a tough uphill battle, but the, the election in Georgia is not over yet. This is going to be a close race. It's too early to call it. If there were something that he could have done, was there anything, or was it uh, uh, different elements well, you, altogether? You can always look back after the election and wonder whether or not there were things that could have been done in the last 30 days or six months or a year ago. I think a lot of people feel that that had certain things been done a year ago, the president would never would have had as tough a race. Even he has indicated that, but I'm not here to find fault with what anyone has done. It's just simply a matter of, of the Clinton campaign has run a superb race. That has helped tighten it. And there are a lot of things that I think we probably could have done better, both in Georgia and on a national level. That's always the case. We'll be assessing throughout the evening. Thank you very much, Fred Cooper. And now let's go to Sandra, who is at the Bill Clinton headquarters here in Georgia. Sandra. Though we're probably a ways away from having all of the votes counted. They are literally dancing here, figuratively and literally. You know, the Democrats started celebrating early here. They started watching the returns come in early as people trickled into the hall. They were excited because in several states, of course, the percentages, the voters that were counted, they were showing that they were ahead. The Democrats also told us this evening that because of the turnout of the voters here in Georgia, they believe that the particular constituencies that they had pinpointed turned out and voted, particularly African Americans. Well, we certainly believe that Bill Clinton and Al Gore created excitement in a number of communities. One of those is the African-American community, where it's clear that as uh, uh, a candidate, Clinton reflected an understanding of the values of, of minorities, which uh, was certainly not present in the Bush administration. Put that down. Right now, Governor Zell Miller, Atlanta Mayor Maynard Jackson, and Senator Sam Nunn have entered the room. And also with them is Congressman John Lewis, we are expecting them to make a statement in just a few moments. We will be back to you, Don and Monica, with more on what they have to say. Thank you very much, Sandra Bookman and Chris Curl. The local election night headquarters for Ross Perot is at a hotel in Dunwoody in North Atlanta. Channel 2's Lisa Tubman is there with his supporters. Lisa. Well, here at the Perot camp, then folks are still very much excited. Let's show you some of the pictures that we took just a couple of minutes ago. Folks are very thrilled, still very excited about the man, about the candidate, still excited about Ross Perot. They don't think this has been a wasted effort. As you can hear, the chance for Ross Perot right behind me. They don't think that they have wasted their time and they're very confident still even though he's at 15 percent if that trend continues he's going to come in third they still think he's done a good job and they're happy about what they've done sandra stewart a ross perot supporter summed it all up for us uh, i think we're all very positive about the actions that we've taken how we have tried to instigate change that we hope will follow through even if by chance we're not totally successful in this one election. I believe we feel that the people have made a stand, and that's important to us. The feeling here is also that there are a lot more ways to measure success other than getting to the White House, number one. Mr. Perot focused, helped focus a lot of attention on the issues. He helped the uh, candidates, the other two candidates, focus their attention on the issues. And one other point, he brought a lot of attention to the independent party, which they feel, come 1996, will indeed be a force to be reckoned with. Reporting live from a very excited, still, Perot campaign, I'm Lisa Tubman, Channel.